Hey, this is Tom, and in this week's video, we're going to start working on some tap handles for our local pub. Okay, I am back at the shop, back home, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that little teaser video that I put out uh, earlier in the week. I do apologize, I had intended to do this whole video while I was uh, traveling, and uh, Apparently I left a bunch of the, the footage at home. But uh, in this week, we're working on uh, tap handles for our, our friends over at Fainting Goat Brewery. And there's three pieces to it. Actually, hang on a second. I'll show you the other part. All right, so the main body of the tap handle is uh, made of pine. Right? It's, um, I want to say it's three quarter inch uh, thick pine. Uh, this part needs to get cut. We route out a, a center section in here. This is going to get uh, sanded, finished, stained, and then this middle section will have a um, the chalkboard paint in there so they can just write the type of, uh, of beer that they have on, uh, on that particular tap. Uh, in order to connect this to the handles, we made ferrules, right, that go in the bottom, like such. Actually, it seats all the way up in there. I just don't want to get it stuck yet. And then at the top, is the famous fainted goat, the fainting goat, right? And so uh, there's still some work to do to get these done. Um, so what we need to do is, the, it's got the studs here, and so I need to go ahead and um, uh, route into here a little bit so that this can fit inside of there, effectively kind of like this, right? And uh, it'll get epoxied in place. So uh, this week's video, since I've been rambling, it's almost two minutes already, is on getting this much of it done, uh, you're getting these two parts uh, uh, done, and uh, we'll, we'll keep working from there. So sit back and enjoy the show. Apparently, I have lost the video of me taking the uh, piece of pine I had out and uh, cutting it on the chop saw. Effectively, I cut them all to length, and then I just used stops on the on the saw to help me line it up so I could very quickly and easily get the same length there. Uh, once that was done, I cut the angles. So I basically had the part roughed out, and at this point, we're uh, using the CNC mill to uh, basically be a fancy CNC router for me today. So what we're doing is on this inset area here, we're getting it all cleaned out uh, so that we can put the... Um, the chalkboard paint on the inside here. So I'm just using a uh, 2D adaptive roughing um, thing here. This is actually in real time. I, I didn't speed anything up, so you can see that it's actually moving pretty good. I, I want to say I was. That's a 316th inch uh, bullnose end mill with a 10 thousandths radius on it, and we're moving at 40 inches a minute. Uh, it, is, it is climb milling there, and um, so we got a pretty good, uh, pretty good finish on that. So one thing I noticed is uh, obviously, you know, it's, it's pine, it could go a whole lot faster, but uh, the finish uh, suffered quite a bit. It started to see a whole lot of tearing in there. So even though physically with a softer material like this, uh, it's possible to go faster, um, really anything over about 40 inches a minute was uh, just, it was just leaving it in a, in a poor uh, poor quality. Now again, you can kind of see all of it's going to, need to get sanded anyways, um, or at least you know the edges need to get sanded. You know, classic deburring kind of situation if it, this were metal, but uh, this worked out okay. Um, in fact, I was actually pretty happy about it. One thing that I did do at, uh, with this one is, and you can kind of see the nozzle there uh, from this angle, is I I used the Noga. Uh, um, what is that called? Uh, I don't want to call it a cool mist uh, setup, but um, the misting setup. But I turned the, the fluid off. All I did is just you know, air to keep the chips out of there and keep it from loading up. Um, it just it really, it wasn't having any problems cutting like that. Uh, and it, but what it really amounted to is you couldn't really see what it was doing. So just you know, some air to keep the chips blown off there. Made uh, an almighty mess, but it worked. Um, I had 10 of these to do, and it worked out really well. I was able to just blast through this. Uh, this is a real-time operation, so you can see that um, overall, I think it took about three and a half minutes per handle. So we're getting towards the, the top edge of it here. You'll see it start to do the, um, you know, clean up just the corners. Uh, I think that's probably the 
Is that the last pass? Uh, this would be the last pass here. So to clean up those corners. Yeah, there we go. Corner clean up, corner clean up. So I made sure when I designed it that the routing or the uh, sorry the round uh, corners were the radius of the corner was the exact same radius of the cutter I was going to use, and then we were done, just like that. All right, next step was just to get the half inch hole drilled in all these things so the, the ferrule has some place to go. Uh, I just set up a couple of stops on the, the mill and it just made quick, uh, quick work of this. Um, I don't have a drill press anymore, so sometimes I end up using the mill as a, as a drill press, but uh, it worked out well, you know, a couple of uh, one to three blocks locked in place and just knocked these things out. I think it took maybe 10 minutes to get all this stuff done. It took longer to set up than it was to drill, so, but that's normally the case. All right, so once that was done, it was time to uh, clean up the corners on this one. And I don't have a routing table, so I had to improvise a little bit. So let's take a look at what that looked like in real time now. All right, next thing up, it's over to the lathe to make the ferrules. Now these ferrules, I'm using uh, 6061, uh, three quarter inch 6061, uh, taking the barrel of it down to uh, half an inch, and then doing a, um, I want to say it is, well, I don't remember now how wide I did for the, the neck itself, but uh, uh, that'll show up in just a second, actually. Um, so anyways, pretty, pretty straightforward, you know, um, turn it down to size, as you can see here, it took three or four passes. I was doing uh, about, uh, see, I had to take off 135 thousandths total on this one, because um, this is actually a little oversized, but uh, I did it in like four passes. Oh, there we go. Uh, so I took, uh, that's, that's uh, 200 thousandths there, uh, so not quite quarter inch uh, on that part of it. Um, and then I switched gears and so I'd face them off all to uh, the same length and then drill the uh, tap size hole in it. Uh, these, uh, these tap handles um, for beer kegs use a, a pretty standard uh, 3 8 uh, coarse tap. So uh, basically I did them all to size, then I drilled them all, and then I tapped them all one at a time. Um, so. Yeah, I was putting them in and out of the, the chuck a lot, but I wasn't having to change tools over and over and over again. So it worked out really well. It didn't take too long. I think I had 10 of these to do. Uh, I think I might have spent uh, 45 minutes making these, half hour, 45 minutes. Uh, it wasn't that long, but it worked out pretty well. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching uh, the progress on these, uh, these tap handles. Um, thanks again for watching and uh, for your patience. I do apologize about uh, not getting that out uh, the way I had planned this week. Um, pop quiz. Who noticed what I did wrong in the video? Leave a comment, uh, leave a comment below. In fact, if you liked what you saw this week, please consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. Um, always open to suggestions. You know, that's what the comments are for. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this. Anyways, 
Uh, I'm going to wrap it up. It's been a long, long week, and um, there's no rest for the weary. I'm back in the shop uh, in the morning. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you.